Hello, and welcome to the SolidCAM introduction series of training videos. The topic for this discussion is Pro-HSR Toolpaths, or Pro-High-Speed Roughing Toolpaths. Pro-HSR Toolpaths are the next step above the standard HSR Toolpaths. You'll notice that it will calculate slightly faster, as well as giving you additional refinement and control over your toolpath than the traditional HSR. It is still a 3D roughing toolpath that's based on the geometry that you selected as your stock and your target, but has additional options over the original HSR toolpaths that they just simply don't have. To activate a Pro HSR toolpath, you're going to go to your SolidCam 3D tab and select Pro 3D HSR. The three toolpath selections that you have are HSR Hatch, HSR Contour, and HSR Rest. HSR Hatch will slice the model at your specified step down and it will cut back and forth across the material at a specified vector. HSR Contour will slice the model at your defined step down and it will use the part shape to dictate the profile as it's roughing the material. HSR Rest is a rest roughing operation that will allow you to reference a previously rough part and machine in only the areas that are remaining that the larger tool could not get into. Let's talk about Pro 3D HSR Contour. The workflow for Pro HSR toolpaths are exactly the same as all other toolpaths within SolidCAM. Selecting a geometry, setting your tool, and then setting the various parameters. In the Geometry tab, Pro HSR toolpaths will automatically select the target that you'd find in the, your project. You can, however, add additional either surfaces or solid models to it if they need to be considered in the roughing strategy. Leaving, leaving, leaving material for finishing can be had down here. When it's set to global, uh, it's going to leave a global 20 thousandths offset for finishing. You can, however, change this from global to radial and axial offsets by setting the values here. In this case, I'm going to have it set to global, leaving 20 thousandths of material on for finishing. The stock definition. The stock definition will keep track of your stock in process. So as you add additional toolpaths in your tree, as you're, as you're adding additional roughing toolpaths, respect the stock model will automatically calculate the stock in the current state. That way we don't need to create additional boundaries for containment. However, you can define your stock by adding additional surfaces or by using boundaries as well. In this case, we're going to auto-calculate based on the updated stock. Fixtures can be added as well. You can define fixtures by surfaces or by curves. And to add a fixture to your project, I can either add the model or I can add the fixture from my 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 setup. Now this is going to be relative relative to whether or not I want the fixture to be included in the toolpath during the calculation process. So what I can do is I can add model and I can pick the models of the solids that I want to be included in the calculation process while calculating. In this case you can give it the safety distance as far as how far to stay away from that fixture. Again this is your comfort level of how far to stay away from the fixture itself. If you had pre-drilled pre holes for roughing you could pick them here as well and it will plunge in the areas that were pre-drilled. Once we have our geometry selected for machining let's go and let's pick a tool. So in this case I'm going to come in and grab this one inch bullnose tool for roughing. With Pro HSR Toolpaths, you have the ability to control and activate dynamic holder collision dish checking. And you can collision check the holder against the machine surfaces or against the stock in process. If you do specify these holder collision checking, you can, you can specify your safety distances to stay away from those areas of the tool. Constraint boundaries are going to work the same as what you've seen in previous toolpaths. In this case, I want the toolpath to be constrained to the stock at hand. So I'm going to tell it that I want it to auto-create based on the stock model. If I want to see what that looks like, it's going to project the stock model to the plane and contain the tool within those areas. 
as the tool relationship is concerned, can it bring the center of the tool up to the center of that boundary? Does it have to keep the tool internal to that boundary? Or can it allow the tool to pass outside that boundary? And then you can give it an additional offset value as well. In the Passes tab is where your meat and potatoes of all your toolpath parameters are going to be. Let's give this a step down of let's say 150 thousandths per step and let's get a toolpath on the screen and let's look at it. A couple things to notice is that because we we selected the fixture to be considered in as part of our toolpath calculation, you'll notice that we're roughing down past the part and it's roughing the entirety of the stock, but it's collision checking against the fixture. If we didn't define the fixture, it would not be included in that and it would cut through the vise of that jaw, or the jaw of that vise, I should say. In your passes tab, as far as your limits, your limit when it's set to automatic is either going to be cognizant of the stock, the target, or both. In this case, they're both being taken into consideration. If I wanted it to stop slicing at the end of the target, I'll, I'll specify that and it will stop the toolpath calculation at the end or the Z level of where the target ends. If you set this to user defined, it'll give you the more traditional style where you can specify the range of where the toolpath starts its calculation and where the toolpath stops. In this case, we'll leave this set to automatic. In the sorting tab, you have the ability to cut one directional, bidirectionally, or spiraling when it's removing the material in the pocket. If you do have it set to one way, your direction of travel is going to be chose by direction one or direction two, direction one being a climb cut type of scenario, direction two being a conventional cut type of scenario. If you had a part that had different regions of areas to cut, maybe a region on the left side of the part and the right side of the part, is it going to process, the, process those by levels or by regions before moving on to the next? And again, this is gonna be related to your part shape and the topology of your part and what you're trying to do. But if we were to allow this to calculate, and if I were to bring this into verification and hit play, We'll, let the, we'll see what the resultant toolpath looks like on the screen. Now with this particular part, this is kind of a very shallow or sloped area at the top of the model. You can see where my slices left a fair amount of material at the top. So I might wanna take some of that into account. You have the ability to initiate adaptive step downs. With adaptive step downs, you can specify a first and a final step down if you so desire, or you can give it user defined step downs. To instigate user defined step downs, it will allow you to instigate a range of toolpaths. So I can give it an upper range of let's say zero with a lower range of maybe let's say minus a quarter inch. And let's step down those areas at a 30,000 step down. So by me giving it user-defined parameters, it's allowing me to specify an upper and a lower range and the step down within that range. So if I were to calculate this toolpath using the manual methodology, you're going to see I've got toolpaths that are grouped together here more at the top that are within that range before dropping down to my standard step down. So if you require manual sorting or manual step downs, you can obviously interject those there. You can also instigate intermediate slices. Instigating intermediate slices will allow you to specify where the tool, where the part becomes more shallow, extra passes to take into account for the refinement of the part. With the end goal being a, as close to net shape part coming off, off of the roughing toolpath as I can. So with this, you'll see our 150,000 step downs, but with, that, with the automatic step down, it will now give me inter, interlacing slices to take those big stair steps off so I can go right to finishing or semi-finishing toolpaths depending on what you need to do for your particular part. You have the ability to also smooth internal and external corners and how it connects between passes. By default, these are typically turned on. Removing quarter pegs is kind of nice because if your step over is too great, you'll see these additional moves on the outside that are very special movements actually that will remove the upstand that might be left from your step over. Link control. 
Link control allows you to how you want to uh, to engage, enter, and exit the, the material. So you have control over your first entry and last entry. And then the link control allows you to control what happens in between the passes. So areas between the links, areas between slices, or links between regions or areas from one end of the part to the other. I'm going to do a save and copy of this toolpath. And on the secondary toolpath, I'm going to select REST Machining. In REST Machining, it allows you to now pick a smaller tool for roughing. So in this case, I'm going to drop from a one-inch bullnose to this half-inch bullnose tool. Levels constraint boundary is the same as what it was in the previous tool. This time, my reference tool, my previous tool that I roughed was that one inch bullnose tool with a corner radius of an 062 corner radius. You can also select this from the toolkit by picking that button and selecting the tool and it will enter those values for you. From here, this is your stock to leave for your rest roughing toolpath. So we left 20 thousandths on for roughing. I'm going to leave 20 thousandths on for finishing as well. From here, we'll set our step downs for the semi roughing toolpath. Set any additional parameters that we are, have our, that we need to define and hit calculate. This toolpath will analyze the areas that the previous tool could not get into and machine only within those specified areas or regions. Now, one thing to talk about as well is that with ramping into your toolpath, you have the ability to control your preferences for how you engage the material. So in this case, is the tool center cutting or, or not? Right now, my ramp type is set to automatic, which means it's going to determine the best methodology. If it's in the material, it's going to helical plunge. If it's outside the material, it's going to straight plunge. But if you wanted to control it specifically, you can control it by picking line, helical, zigzag, or profile. You can give your ramping a priority. So you can give it a preference that says, look, I want you to try to helical into the part if possible. If that's not possible into that area, then I want you to try a profile. If you can't profile, then zigzag. And if you can't get a zigzag, then plunge straight in. And you can change the sort order of your preferences for where the hierarchy or the priority of the, the plunge moves actually are. If I were to bring this toolpath into my simulation, <coughs> into solid verify and hit play the toolpath will machine the areas that the previous tool could not get into so pro 3d hsr toolpaths are a continuation over the standard hsr toolpaths just with more levels of refinement if you have further questions about the specifics of the parameters please reach out to us at technical support at any time Thank you for watching this video, and I hope to see you again on the next.